Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. So my friends over at Beta FV sent me a new product. Uh, they like to randomly send things and not really tell me about it, but... What? Oh, hang on. There, that's better. So my friends over at Beta FPV decided to send me a, a new product. They do this randomly. They don't ruin it. Don't tell me anything about it. So that's kind of interesting and fun. Uh, they sent me their new F4 1S 5 amp uh, brushless flight controller, but this one's special because it comes with Express LRS built into it. See the little SMD antenna? Uh, really excited about all the Express LRS stuff. If you don't know what Express LRS is, um, you've been living under a rock at this point. It is probably uh, the best 2.4 and long range RC link that you can get to date. It is the most affordable and it outperforms all the others out there. It does have a few features that it's lacking compared to the other companies, but uh, for the most part, it is, it is the way to go. If you're looking to extend your range and reduce your latency, Express LRS is probably the smart choice, um, but we're not going to get into that today. So anyways, they sent me this uh, F4 um, AIO brushless flight controller. Uh, it's only five amps. They're pretty much marketing it as a flight controller for uh, building whoops and things like that. But I think I'm going to um, test its might and I'm going to build this into, I think I'm going to do a toothpick build. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments, what I should put this in. Um, I don't really see a ton of point to building a whoop when, uh, ready to fly whoops are so affordable and they're about as good as you can get them out of the box. There's not a lot of improvement that you can do to them. Uh, but I do like the, the interesting form factor. It's very small, very cut back, uh, PCB. It does come with connectors for the motors which uh, I will definitely be removing those if I do decide to do a toothpick build. And the other thing I really like is the fact that it does come with the BT 2.0 battery connector. This connector is the middle of the pack as far as all the um, 1S connectors out there. You've got the PH 1.0, which that thing, that's outdated and it doesn't provide enough current for today's modern motors and electronics and the performance that we're looking to get out of them. Uh, better than this, at least on paper, is the GMB uh, 27 connector. I've had nothing but reliability issues with that connector. It's a great connector. It works, but uh, I don't seem to get a whole lot of uh, life out of it. It only handles so many cycles before the connector just kind of gets sloppy and doesn't work. But it does handle bit more current. And then, of course, we got XT30, which is at the other end of the spectrum, which um, depending on the toothpick build I decide to do, uh, XT30 might be the road I go down. So we'll, uh, we'll cross that road when we get there. But if you're looking to build a high performance whoop, this is the connector that you want. Uh, I would say PH 2.0 is, is dead. It's time has come and gone and that thing needs to get retired. So let's head over to the bench and take a nice close look at the flight controller. So first off in the box, we, uh, we do get the typical accessories we get the little rubber gummy standoffs and uh, some of these self-tapping screws for screwing into like a plastic frame for a whoop uh, other than that it's pretty bare bones uh, as you see it here is how it comes it comes with the motor plugs pre-soldered and the main discharge lead pre-soldered we're not doing USB-C on this just the the, uh, the standard USB connector uh, no VTX built into this but it does have the Express LRS 2.4 receiver as you can see it's using the smd antenna uh, in my experience this gets good range but not as good as having like a or traditional like t antenna coming out of it but uh still pretty good and if for some reason you if you really wanted that ufl connector and you have the skills you can desolder this and solder on a uh, ufl i've done it you can do it it's not easy but it can be done uh, where there is a will there is a way um if you're doing some high KV or high amp draw motors, you're going to want to do direct soldering to these pads. Uh, personally, I would probably desolder these because, you know, all the weight counts, especially when you're running 1S. This board is, like I said, 1S only. The MCU on this is F411. F411 is getting a little bit long in the tooth. Would have been nice if it was F405, uh, but... Uh, I I personally think that the F411's uh, time is coming to an end with all the features packed in the beta flight between 
uh, black box logging, dynamic notch, RPM filtering, all that kind of stuff. The F411 is, um, it's at its limit at this point, but uh, we'll, we'll see. And speaking of Betaflight, this is running as of the, as of the recording of this video, which is uh, October 19th, this is running a nightly version of Betaflight. It's running Betaflight 4.3, which means you also have to have the, the newer Betaflight configurator 10.8.0 to actually be able to configure all the features on this flight controller. Uh, the reason why it's on nightly firmware is Betaflight 4.2 does not support Express LRS over SPI, but Betaflight 4.3 does. So keep that in mind. If you are adverse to running nightly firmwares, don't use this yet. It, it is running a nightly and uh, whatever bugs and issues that come with nightlies are going to come with this flight controller. Um, not that I've experienced any bugs with the current nightlies, but it's always good to, to read the build notes for each version that you flash just so you know what kind of bugs have been corrected from previous versions. Uh, this flight controller does not come with a VTX in it, which is a bit of a disappointment compared to like say the, the happy model boards. But you do save some weight, but you're going to offset that weight by having to use an external VTX, unless you're flying a line of sight. But I don't, I don't know why you would do that. Um, this sucker clocks in at only four grams. This thing is super light. I'm not 100% sure what the weight on like the Express LRS version of the Happy Model AIOs are, uh, but. Looking at adding like a TBS Unified Pro 32, that's going to add about another gram to this. So we're looking about five grams. You include wire, maybe six grams by the time you're done all up. Getting to where other solutions like its competitor, the Happy Model AIO, is still a five amp AIO uh, with a built-in Express LRS, either 900 or uh, 2.4 gigahertz. But that also includes a VTX in it. So there's a pro and con between having the VTX built into the board or being separate separate if the vtx dies you're not out the entire thing um as opposed to this where you just replace the vtx and get a different one uh, also perhaps the vtx inside that happy model board isn't all that great or doesn't have the power output you're looking for um, you're so if we start looking the con at the connectivity because this board is so small it's so cut down and it is using that f411 uh, mcu we are very limited on external io so we do have one full UART, UART 1. Uh, it also has an inverter for SBUS if for some reason you want to throw a, a SBUS receiver on this, which kind of defeats the whole point of it. So you have UART 1 top and bottom, and then we have SBUS in the middle. And uh, we do have buzzer connections here. And on the back here, we do have our uh, smart audio. Here. We have our camera connection here. Um, output to the VTX and then uh, our five volt power and ground and then obviously our, our main battery discharge but that's all we have on this on the other side we do have our uh, our boot slash uh, bind button so this does perform double duty if you want to get your flight control into DFU mode and you don't want to do the software way to do it uh, this is the physical way say for some reason you flash the wrong firmware to it or bricks during the update process uh, using this button, holding it down while you plug in would be how you put it into uh, DFU mode so you can flash firmware. And then on this side of the board, there really is nothing else. Obviously, we have a few little status LEDs, but uh, that is about it. So if we look at Betaflight, it is running Betaflight 4.3.0. Like I said, it's running a nightly. Um, the ports, the way they're going to set this up is UART 1 uh, is for MSP. And we don't have anything for serial RX because the SPI receivers don't tie up a UART. They are directly connected to the MCU. This does make them uh, a little finicky as far as firmware goes, but it does make them lower latency than having them over a UART because there's no decoding going on. Um, and a thing to mention about having Express LRS over SPI is the firmware for the Express LRS receiver is carried in the Betaflight firmware code. So if you want to update your Express LRS receiver on this, you don't do it through the configurator. You do it, it just gets done when you update Betaflight. Uh, as opposed to other boards where they have Express LRS, but it's over UART, you would update those like you would any other Express LRS receiver with the configurator. Uh, I'll link a video um, 
over here so you guys can take a look at how that works. Um, and this all does look a little bit different because we are on a different configurator and the configurator has changed from uh, the last version to this new version. So no longer do we have motors and stuff like that in the configuration tab. Uh, it comes running 8K, 2K, which is about all this flight controller is going to be able to handle. Um, for some reason, they have camera angle already fixed in there. You're going to want to set that to whatever you do. 180 for arming angle, good on them. Soft serial, not really sure why we're doing soft serial. That's just a that's just a memory hog. Air mode, OSD, no dynamic filter, interesting choice. Because you're buying a bare bones board, you're going to have to set this up for your use case. Um, so... If you're not going through and checking and touching every one of these options, you're probably not doing it right. Uh, power and battery, I'm assuming this is set up. It's not going to have a current meter on it, just a voltage. So uh, because that board is so cut down and so small and so light, you do have to lose some features. Current metering is one of those features that had hit the bricks. PID tuning, this is all basically going to be Betaflight stock. Uh, for some reason, they have the sliders or they have the, the filters changed. Uh, they're running gyro rpm filter so let's let's pop over the motors real quick so they do have bi-directional d-shot already active so they must already have bi-directional d-shot firmware flash to the esc so that's really good um very very nice to see that obviously you're going to have to set your motor poles if you don't set this right on high throttle maneuvers it's going to desync and fall out of the air so again be sure you you check all that stuff and this isn't meant to be a beta flight tutorial on how to set this up i'm just kind of going through some of the things you want to be thinking about when you're using this flight controller Back to the receiver tab, we see here it says SPI RX support, and we have nothing under SPI uh, bus receiver. Remember, this is a pre-release firmware. Uh, wouldn't worry about that. Just don't mess with it. It's set up to work the way it is. OSD, I mean, who cares? They're going to have it set up for whatever. Um, video transmitter, obviously nothing because there is no uh, VTX built into it, so you're going to have to set up your own tables when you solder on whatever VTX you decide to use. Uh, black box, obviously no black box, super cut down board. We don't have space for it. You can add a, uh, open lagger, uh, on that one available UART, which, uh, if you don't know what the open lagger project is, it's basically an SD card based, um, black box that you add over, over a UART. Pretty simple to use. Uh, and if you want to try tuning micros and things that don't typically have black box, that's the way to do it another link in the video description. All right, so let's get down to the CLI. And the, the big question everybody's going to have is how do I bind this receiver? Well, first things first is since it's SPI Express LRS, you need to, you're going to need to go into your Express LRS Lua, go down to Express LRS, and make sure you're on a packet rate of 250 hertz. Express LRS over SPI, at least as of right now, only works on one packet rate. If you change this, you lose connection. The way this board comes set up is for 250 Hertz. Uh, the happy model comes set up for 500 open TX beta flight. They don't like 500. It's a bunch of garbage. Uh, it gets a lot of garbage data and it's not even actually using 500. It's just using whatever works. Uh, this one, you're going to need to be set at 250. Otherwise you can't bind to it. Um, we're not worried about binding phrases. So you're just going to do bind on your radio. And over on the configurator in the CLI, just type bind underscore RX, hit enter, let it bind for a second, and then type save and hit enter. And then when you get back into here, you should have your stick movement. Very easy to bind. And if for some reason you fly all your quads on uh, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, whatever hertz, and you don't want to switch back and forth between quads just because this board's stuck at 250, you can use this factor here, express LRS underscore rate underscore index equals one. You can change the range in which it'll bind. Either I think zero is 500 and three is the lowest. Um, I think I have a video on that. I'll post a link over over here for you guys to, to check out. But that's how you would do that. So anyways, that's a real quick one. This is the beta FPV F. 4 1S 5 amp AIO flight controller with Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz built into it. What do you guys think of this thing? Do you think it's going to live up to the expectations that it's going to be a good flight controller? Um, what do you think I should put this in? I really want to put it in toothpick. What do you guys think? Let me know. Put it in the uh, comments down below. Uh, make your voice heard. Um, 
you want to support me, head over to tweetfb.com. If you want to get your board, click that link in the video description. It's an affiliate link. It's an easy way for you to give back to the channel without actually uh, coming out of pocket at all. Uh, other affiliated vendors, click the link, tweetfv.com, and scroll to the bottom. You can find all the ways to get a hold of me, Discord, email, Patreon, all the affiliate links, all that stuff greatly helps me out. Uh, what do you guys think? What do you want me to see? What do you want to see me do with this awesome little flight controller? I'm excited about it. Um, and I'm excited to build a toothpick. I haven't flown a 1S toothpick in a very long time. Uh, the last 1S toothpick was on my own custom uh, cut frames a long time ago when this stuff was decent but not as good as it is now. All right, folks. That's all for today. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching this. And as always, stay positive.